So Ugreen is launching their new NAS or network attached storage units and they've sent me this one for review. It boasts a price that's more affordable and performance that may surprise you. So stay tuned. So if you're not aware of what a network attached storage or NAS is, you can think of a NAS as a special box that sits in your home or office network, kind of like a big external hard drive that everyone in your home or office can access. Now the model that's been sent to me is the DXP4800 Plus, and Ugreen makes several other models with varying specifications and capacities. Now here on Ugreen's website, which I'll put the link in description, you can see all of the NAS products that are being released by Ugreen, including the four bay model that I'm reviewing today. There's also a less expensive two drive model, a six bay model, an eight bay model, and an all flash NVMe model for very fast performance. So like I said, the unit we have is the DXP4800 Plus. The difference between the Plus and the normal 4800 is that this one has the faster Intel 12th generation Pentium Gold processor, where areas the normal 4800 has a Pentium N processor, which is only four cores and four threads. This one has five cores, six threads, and also has a larger storage for the operating system at 128 gigs versus 32. So if you're trying to run multiple applications on it, you do wanna have that extra space and a beefier processor. This one also has eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, which we can upgrade in here if we remove these screws. And I'll also show you where we can put NVMe drives for SSD caching or storage. Now what you see here is everything you're gonna get in the box when you purchase the DX4800 Plus. You're gonna get an ethernet cable for connecting to your router, power adapter and power cable, quick user guide, full manual and warranty information, screwdriver and all the necessary screws that you may need, especially if you're going to use 2.5 inch drives in the 3.5 inch bays, and thermal pads if you're gonna utilize the NVMe functions, and then of course, two keys because the drive bays do lock for security. Accessing the rear panel is as easy as unscrewing these two screws. Once it's opened, you can see all the upgradeability of the system. Inside the bay, we have two slots for so dim DDR5 RAM. It, this model comes with eight gigabyte standard. It can be upgraded to 64 gigs. We also have two M.2 NVMe slots for either flash storage or SSD caching. Ugreen was also kind enough to send me four WD Red hard disk drives, four terabytes each. I'm glad that they included the Red Plus because the regular WD Reds can be SMR drives, and that's for a whole other video, but you want to have the correct drives. I'll put links in the description for the right types of drives. You want to have them prepared for NAS. In this case, in Western Digital, you want them to be WD Red Plus or Pro, not the normal Reds, and make sure they are not SMR. Also, Seagate Iron Wolf is another favorite of the channel, or Synology drives. On the back of the unit, first we see this big magnetic dust mesh filter, and that's just to keep dust out of this big cooling fan for the unit. And I like that they have a big cooling fan because hard drives do generate a lot of heat and you need to keep them cooled. And we'll see how quiet this is during my tests. Down here on the bottom, we have our ports and IO. We have an HDMI output at 8K, but I think this model only puts out 4K. Then USB 3.2, that could be for adding another hard drive there. And then two USB 2.0 ports. And this would be obviously for booting up another operating system. If you don't wanna use the OS that comes with Ugreen, which we're going to test shortly, you could maybe install TrueNAS, for example. We have two ethernet ports. We have LAN 2 and LAN 1. One of these is 2.5 uh, gigabits and the other one is 10 gigabit link, which is kind of interesting because you typically would want a failover. I don't think we could aggregate or team these unless they were both linked at 2.5 gigabit, but that's cool that we have both of those links. Then we have a hard reset for putting a paper clip in there and doing a hard reset. And then of course we have the port for our power adapter. Now it's time to load our hard drives into the NAS. And of course we have four bays and the way you access the bays is just by pushing in here, provided that it's unlocked. If it is locked, you will have to unlock it with your provided key. This just comes up, comes out just like that. Something I like about these drive bays that I find very nice is there's this little tab 
right here, which allows us to slide this out so that we can get the drive in more easily. Because oftentimes you have to pop these in and kind of seems a little chintzy, but we're gonna be able to do it just like that. Slide it into position and then we can slide it back in. So I think that's a really cool feature of, this is one of the nicer drive bay caddies that I've seen come with a NAS. So well done to you Green for that. Now that our last drive has been installed, all bays are filled, we can go power this on, connect it to our network, and then start the setup. Okay, now I'm an expert, let's get started. Now that our NAS is connected and powered on, fully booted up, we need to connect to it with our browser. So you'll choose whichever is your favorite browser, and in order to find our NAS, we're going to type find.ugnas.com, and this will find your NAS so that you can connect to it and perform the setup. Once your device is found, you'll see an interface like this. It has our device name. You could change this if you want. I'm gonna leave it at default for the purpose of this video. Then we need to create a local administrator account. So I'm gonna create Nico as the administrator account, and then I'm going to generate a password. Then repeat the password. And then we can click next step. And all we're doing right now is setting up the NAS for the first time. We're gonna go ahead and enter our personal information here, which I'm not giving up to you, no offense. And at this next step, we're deciding what kind of updates we want done. We can have automatically install updates to, to UGOS or apps, and I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on recommended. And then here, do we wanna share device analysis with Ugreen? This is uh, telemetry type of stuff that I'm not a fan of, so I'm not going to agree with it. If you want to, go ahead. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna click start. And now we've finished initializing the device. And this will be the nice clean interface that you see when you log into your NAS array. And we have all these different apps and features and settings we can tweak. We also have a control panel in the top right. And this interface may seem familiar to some of you advanced users because UGOS or Ugreen's NAS OS is running on top of Debian. And Debian Linux is extremely stable, very popular. Some of the most popular Linux distributions are running on Debian or they're called Debian based. And let's go ahead and get started. So we need to set up our our drives so that we have a NAS array that we can use. So we're going straight over here to Storage Manager and we have a simple wizard here. So we're going to start with Create Storage Pool, then Space, then Completions. We're going to hit Start. And the first thing we need to do is we need to decide what type of RAID we're going to do. And we have all of these options, whether it's RAID 10, 6, 5, JBOD. Well, RAID 5 is what we're going to use because we have four drives. And what I'm going to do is, is Three of the drives are gonna be storage, and the easiest way to explain it is that one's a parity drive. That's not exactly how it works, but the important thing is, is we're not gonna have all the space of four times four terabytes. Somewhere in between um, 12 and 16 we'll have, but we can lose one drive no matter what. If one of our drives fails in our four drive array, we can just replace it and we don't lose any of our data. So this is a, a good balance of performance and also uh, security and protection. So we're gonna go with RAID 5. And then we're going to select the hard disks. We are going to select all of them. And you theoretically could do two and two, but in this kind of configuration with four drives, the best performance and trade-off in my opinion would be to RAID 5 and have all drives selected. Then the next step, and it's processing our request. And this note here is just warning us that essentially those hard drives that are in our NAS array, the data is gonna be gone. So it's just warning you. So if you have data on the drives you're gonna use, you shouldn't, um, then that's a warning there. I'll go ahead and continue. And we have 11.1 terabytes of available space and we're going to use BTRFS, which is a really good file system Synology started, I believe, um, and that's gonna give us the best trade-off of performance and stability. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that. If you, if you guys are Linux gurus and you wanna use EXT4, go ahead, but I'm gonna stick with the recommendation. And then it's gonna be called storage space one, complete. Now it's going to delete all data, formatting the drive. We got to enter our password to make sure and confirm. All right, now that that's done, our RAID array is essentially 
fully intact. We've already set it up. We've done all four drives in RAID 5. They're all 3.6 terabytes each, um, adding up to a total of about 11 because we're doing one drive part of it for parity so that we can lose any one of these drives. And if one goes bad, it'll tell us here and we can replace that drive, hot swap it in, and it'll automatically repair itself. Very stable balance of high performance and stability. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and close this. Now we need to enable SMB and share folders. So we're gonna go over here to control panel, then file service, and then we need to check this to enable SMB. Then we're gonna go ahead and copy this right here. Copy, because we're gonna access this in Windows Explorer, which is why we're enabling SMB service. Then click apply. Okay, that's done. We can go ahead and close this, but we're not done yet. We have to create fair shared folders. So we open up file manager over here and under shared folders, we're gonna hit click this plus sign, new shared folder, and I'm gonna type mm, movies. And it's gonna be located in storage space one. That's the only one we have, no space limit, and we're not going to hide it. I'm gonna create, and then we're going to create the access. We're gonna do read and write for general users, actually just me, and then everyone else, and that should be good. Then we'll click OK. And now we have a movies folder. So now let's see if we can connect to it in File Explorer. We just enter the address here and then hit enter. And now it's connected us to the NAS folders. This is the movie folders we just created. This is just a user directory for the administrator of the NAS. We don't need to do anything with that. But here on movies, we're gonna right click on it and then click map network drive. And then we're gonna go ahead and leave this okay. And then click finish. Now this is our folder where we can start sharing things. Now to test how fast we can transfer, let's say a whole series of TV shows. I'm gonna transfer Shogun over to my NAS from my desktop and see how quick I can transfer. Now I'm over here in downloads, copy this, send it over to our new NAS. We have an empty folder here and we're just gonna paste it over. Okay, we're hitting at around 114 megabits per second. I'm only on a one gigabit link and this is how fast my big NAS that I built myself with a server processor and 32 gigs of registered server RAM and an HPA controller. So this is hitting as hard as my big powerhouse NAS. Now, mind you, I'm only on a gigabit link and this one supports 2.5 gigabit and 10 gigabit links. So I'd like to do another test of my next video or an upcoming video where I put the 10 gigabit link uh, to the test but I've not set up on the network now. I'll do that for my next video and see how good it does there because I'd be really impressed if it can exceed this. Now, overall, my impression of the UGOS is that it's easy to use, but there's not a whole lot there. I do like the appearance. I do like the performance of the NAS itself, but this OS doesn't have a whole lot going on here. Um, even in the App Center, the only apps I'm seeing available here are what we already have installed in the system, the basic control panel file manager, not a whole lot of things such as for Docker to run containers, virtualization, things that Synology has, for example. Now, obviously Ugreen is new to the game here and they're not as big of a player as Synology, but as far as hardware to hardware, Pretty darn close for a good price compared to Synology, which by the way, guys, you wanna subscribe. I'm gonna be covering some new Synology products on the channel very soon. I already have them, uh, so definitely subscribe for that. But what I'm seeing here as far as the UGOS, it's new, it works, it's running on Debian, which is just really stable. But when you're thinking of how much less in price this is compared to Synology, from a hardware standpoint, amazing deal at um, I think when it goes public, it, this one's going to be around $5.99 or $6.99. Uh, you can check the website in the description for the latest prices. But right now, it's like $380 versus its equivalent on Synology would be around $1,000. But you don't get Synology's awesome OS. It's NAS OS that a lot of people try to clone, um, oftentimes unsuccessfully. But overall, very good NAS, especially for the price. And congratulations on making it to the end of the video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like it, please click like and consider subscribing. You can pick up this product on the Kickstarter page at the link in description. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time.